That's right. It's time to get deep inside. We <laughs> it's time to go inside the matchup here. Week <laughs> seven uh, kicks off, uh, finishes off Sunday. Jesus, the words right now are just not flowing well. We've got the Atlanta Falcons traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. They, these two teams, both of them, entering this game at three and three. The Viking or the Falcons, a surprise three and three team, playing well. Aaron, you have spoken very highly of them uh, to start the season because they have that dog mentality of Arthur Smith. The Bengals are favored in this game, six and a half points with an over under of forty seven and a half. Aaron, what's the storyline you're following and watching for in this game on both sides of the ball? Yeah, for me, it's how underrated the Cincinnati Bengals defense has been. Um, we often associate when we look at the Cincinnati Bengals, we see Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon, a brand new offensive line. And we say, oh, wow, they have a lot of weapons offensively. This is going to be an explosive team. Well, that explosiveness has actually come on the defensive side of the football. And maybe it's not a lot of name guys. Maybe you got, you know, guys like um, Hendrickson and, and guys like that who are very, very, very good players, but aren't as well known. Um, and I think that's what that's what the storyline has been for them all year. It's the reason they're at where they're at, even with the slow start, especially offensively, you saw the defense play well. And we all I kept saying was the offense will get it going. And once the offense gets it going, they should start winning games. And this is why, um, you know, we did have the debate Minnesota or the Bengals, and I put the Bengals over Minnesota. And, and with the offense playing better, they're still not quite there, but they are playing a little bit better. This is why the Bengals are a contender, because the Bengals' offense has the potential to be elite. And if their defense can continue to play the way they have, they're a Super Bowl-caliber team. Do I think they can go and beat the Chiefs and the Bills again? Maybe not. Maybe maybe I'm not there yet. Um, and it would take some magic, but they had magic last year and got there. And I think this offense is capable of having that magic and we've seen it, but that defense is very, very underrated. And I think they're going to cause some fits for Atlanta this week. So Atlanta is going to have to be very, very patient with what they want to do. And they've been so far. So I expect them to, but uh, you have to give some credit to the Cincinnati Bengals defense because they are kind of the unsung hero over the year of the past year and a half for this team. What are the, what are the Falcons? What does the Falcons offense need to do to kind of get to the Bengals defense and what's, what's their, what's their weakness? What's their strength? And at least for the, for the Bengals defensive side. And again, what does the Falcons have to do to get to that? Well, I will always say, I will always still lean that the, the Bengals secondary is still the weakest part of their team. Uh, I, I'm not saying they're weak this year. They're not, they're not uh, out there just trash. Like I felt like they were at times, um, a year ago or two years ago. But I do think that the Atlanta Falcons know who they are. They are very true to who they are, which is running the football. So uh, if if you're the Atlanta Falcons, you can't waver from that. I don't care how good Cincinnati's run defense is or they think it is. They're about middle of the pack right now when it comes to giving up the run. They're a little bit better giving up the um, against the pass. So they're kind of a middle tier when you talk about yardage-wise uh, defense. But they're really, really good on third downs. They can get off the field and then they can get their ball back to their offense. And they're not giving up a lot of points, under 20 points per game. So Atlanta's got to find ways to get in the end zone and not settle for field goals. Um, I really believe this is about Atlanta just staying true to who they are, um, staying on the field, keeping the ball out of Joe Burrow's hands, try to convert on third downs. And if they do that, I think they'll have some success. Um I, I have to I have to get my predictions out here, but I'm pretty sure I went with the Bengals here. Um, I, I, I think Lord. the bank, you're good. Oh, oh, great. Oh, you did it differently. I was looking for a big box and a solo to come up. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. It's, I, that was only because I thought, you know how. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm taking the Bengals here. Um, 27, 16. I just think that defense is too, too much. And Atlanta's offense will struggle to score. I do think, uh, they'll run the ball, but it's not going to be enough. Bengals 27 Falcons 16. Yeah, I'm flying on that same that same train there. I got one, the Bengals same score, 27. I got the Falcons getting 17 points in this game. I think, like you said, uh, I think the offense for the Bengals is just going to be too much for the Falcons to handle. Um, and the and, and I think the Bengals move on to to four and three. And it's going to be. A, I think it's going to be a competitive game. I know this. I know it's a 10 point spread there. And um, but I, I do think the Falcons keep it competitive because that's just the way the Falcons play. And again, not a knock on the Falcons at all to to lose this game, but. Um, Cincinnati is just a little bit farther ahead and that offense is just a little bit better. 